<laughs> Welcome to Aussie Wristwatch. I'm Jessica and today I've got a little... I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about this one. I had so much fun <laughs> doing this research for this video. I thought I'd talk about micro brands and uh, that's because, well, I love them, it turns out, uh, and I've been on the hunt to find not the exhaustive list, but a pretty damn good list of micro brands out there. So we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, first, let's roll the intro. Okay, before we get started, uh, thumbs up, like, whatever you wanna call it, and please subscribe if you haven't already. Please tell your friends about my channel. Um, yeah, thank you as always for watching. Now, <laughs> Um, I've been into watches for a really long time, but as some of you know, if you've been watching this channel a lot, I, I'm a new enthusiast, I guess, is the best way I can describe it, in the sense that I've, I've been into watches, I've always liked them on my wrist, like my, my Pam today, the Douay, uh, but I don't know a lot about watches from a hor horology point of view like a, you know what are the movements um, what are the sizes what are the cases what are the dials all that kind of stuff right the important things I've been learning about that in great detail this year in particular this is the whole reason I do this channel now um, I, that also means I don't understand the ecosystem they operate in so I you know I didn't understand as you'll see in one of the earliest videos I did, you know, my rant about Rolex, like I had no idea about the bullshit that goes on with the ADs and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, I don't or didn't understand the, um, the hierarchy, the pyramid um, in terms of brands and who sits where and what's a luxury brand versus a, a premium brand or, you know, lifestyle brand, whatever, whatever. I mean, I grew up buying, you know, uh, fashion watches because I thought they looked nice and you know there's nothing wrong with that by the way but uh, had I been a little bit more informed uh, at an earlier age when I started to you know earn a decent income and afford different watches I probably would have had a slightly different collection by now in particular micro brands um, and we should define micro brands so I kind of took a, a little bit of a hybrid from few videos here and there where I've tried to define it and basically companies with limited production and their focus particularly on style and also most likely have limited resources both in funding and in-house capacity like movements and manufacturing capacity etc and and in that there's a very broad spectrum so there's a there's a couple to a handful of ones that I'll mention in this video that you might be like, that's not a micro brand, but I think it kind of still is, but they're kind of verging on um, being a being an independent brand, I guess. Um, but, you know, for argument's sake, I threw them in there anyway because I liked their watches. So I think this is a long list and it's not in any particular order it's not in alphabetical order because i would have got that wrong um it's just kind of as they fall and i've had a bit of fun with this so i've listed the brand and then i'm like if i had to pick one understanding that most of these guys have multiple watches i want but if i had to pick one this is the one i'd pick right now could change from day to day of course so let's start off with brew watches they're a company that's based in New York, and you're gonna find that actually a lot of these micro band, bands, micro, I'm gonna, how many times am I gonna say that in this video? Micro brands are actually US based, which I found quite interesting. Now, this brand brew was founded by an industrial designer, and it was Jonathan Ferrer, and he's developed a reputation for like a fresh take on the designs, and he loves coffee, so hence brew. <laughs> now, if I had to pick one, I was thinking I'd pick the metric steel dial at $425. It's 36 millimeters in case diameter, sapphire glass, stainless steel, um, and it's got a folding clasp buckle and it's got super luminova and it's just, it's pretty retro looking and I just kind of liked it. So I'm going to put photos up, of course, as we, as I talk through this video and you can kind of like have a look and come on the journey with me. Next is Astro Banks, Chicago based. 
Founded by watch lover Andrew Perez, quickly carved out a niche for creating attractive looking mechanical watches. Um, and they are, they're very cool looking. If I had to pick one though, I reckon I'd pick the Sea Ranger Polar Edition for $850. It's 40 millimeters, so it's a little bit bigger. As you know, I like a bigger watch. <laughs> um, and Dome Sapphire Crystal, some of the other features with a Swiss automatic Salida movement. So it's the SW200. Um, but yeah, it's looking pretty cool. The next one is Farah or Ferrer. I'm going to pronounce a few of these brands incorrectly. Please feel free in the comments to tell me what it should be. That's a micro brand. Um, it's a British brand. They do fun designs. Their pieces fall within the 1000 to 2000 price range. So they're a little bit more expensive, but still, I guess, affordable, depending on what your level of affordability is. I, you know, I don't want you to have a crack at me for being out of touch with the common person, but they're not $10,000. Um, but they have Swiss movements. So if I had to pick one, I'd pick the Stanhope 2, which is actually $995 but I think that's US, or, so it's probably more than that. <laughs> um, it's a 38.5 millimeter case. It's got a cushion um, dome designed case, which kind of looks funky with super luminova and subdial scarlet red. So it looks very, very elegant. And it's one of their newer models. So um, jump on their website, they've got a really cool video. I'll put some pictures up as well. Margret from New Zealand is the next brand. I saw these guys um, a few months ago and I was like, oh, they're very cool. So uh, they're, they use a variety of movements uh, and styles. So they've got ETA, Salida and Miota. They're highly water resistant, specifically the Moana Pacific Waterman models. They're capable of a 500 meter depth. Uh, and they've got a very affordable price range. They're usually about 300 with a Salida movement. And they're about 765 for uh, um, the Waterman bronze case diver. So it's not a bad price. If I had to pick one though, I'm picking the Leonchin 40 millimeter with a Swiss made Salida caliber SW200 automatic movement. It's got a signed screw down crown. It's got stainless steel brush bed, DLC black coated, sapphire double domed AR coating uh, for the for the face um, look it just it's kind of like a, a mix of a Bell and Ross and maybe a tag or something but it looks very very cool and you know for the price bracket it's it's a good watch Melbourne watch Co is next so my my hometown yay has their own watch brand um, that was founded off a successful crowdfunding campaign in 2013. Now, their goal was to create high quality watches at accessible price points and, well, they seem to have done that quite well. So, since several years ago of launching, they've had a number of um, different watches launched, most of which are sold out. So, if I had to pick one, I would, and it's sold out, but I would pick the Portsea Calendar Classic Rose at $995. It's a very elegant looking dress watch. Uh, it's 40 millimeter with a 13 mil case thickness. It's got a Miota um, triple calendar automatic in it, and it's about 100 meters water resistant. Uh, it, for those of you who don't know Melbourne, Portsy is like um, the Hamptons uh, <laughs> or Malibu <laughs> to those cities. Um, so, you know, it's kind of like where the rich and famous hang out at summer in Melbourne. It's not the only place, but it's it's pretty up there. Uh, and you've got to have a lot of coin to live there. And this watch really does. Um, when I saw it, I was like, yeah, that looks like a Portsy watch. <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to have that. But, you know, they have um, they have great watches like Carlton, Fitzroy. They're all named after suburbs or streets in Melbourne. Flinders, they're all very elegant looking watches. We should do a collab, fellas, because um, I love your brand. Okay. Monta is next, slightly bigger, out of St. Louis, Missouri, or is it St. Louis? Can someone please tell me because I always want to know. And they've risen in the ranks since being founded in 2016. They have a great product reputation for producing watches with an elite level of finishing and they're at accessible price points. They're actually at an upper level of a price point, but we'll get to that. Um, they use Swiss automatic movements, hence the price. 
The SkyQuest is Bunter's sporty travel watch with undeniable resemblance, yes, to the much harder to get Rolex GMT R Star. It has a Solita movement, 56 hour power reserve, and if I had to pick one, I would pick the SkyQuest, 24 hour with date at $3,698. Um, it does nod very strongly to the Rolex GMT Master, but hey, it's a great watch. Um, you'll see on lots of forums people talk about that watch. It's got a very, um, it's got a very strong little uh, fan base for sure. Okay, Oak and Oscar, Chicago based since uh, 2015, and they are named for American Beaux Arts architect Daniel Burnham. When that was the Burnham launch, the first time and date model that they ever bought out. And they, um, they're just a, a very elegant kind of watch. So the company's own name comes from its team members' love of good bourbon. So that's the Oak. And the name of the founder's Chase, Chase Fran France's dog, Oscar. Particularly rescue dogs um, play a large role in the brand's mission statement, which includes donating a portion of the sales to Chicago area rescue dog charities. I love you guys. I have a rescue dog. She's asleep down here right now. I don't want to move the camera to muck it all up, but Teagues would love you guys too. Um, if I had to pick just one, I'd probably pick the Humboldt GMT at 2,150. Um, Anti-fragile, anti-worry, go anywhere, do anything, watch is what they say on the website. It's Swiss powered, anti-shock, anti-magnetic, GMT function, uh, brush stainless steel at 40 millimeters. Now it's, it's to me, um, not entirely, but it's got aesthetic elements that nod to a Rolex Explorer 2, which that watch is growing on me significant, but significantly, by the way, I'm not suggesting I'd go out and buy one but I am, I am kind of falling in love with it. Um, but yeah, Oak and Oscar, um, love you guys. Keep up the good work helping um, beautiful rescue dogs. Vortic is the next brand and these guys are very cool. So they're Penn State students, probably not anymore given that they were founded in 2013. And they used 3D printing to craft modern steel watch cases to house antique American made pocket watch movements from the lights of Elgin, Waltham and Hamilton that were originally discarded. They're based in Fort Collins, Colorado and they offer traditional CNC machine cases as well as 3D printed ones. These guys are pretty um, ingenious. If I had to pick one, and this was really hard. I mean, it's been hard with all of them, don't get me wrong, but the military edition 2022, so the new edition is $11,995. So it's, it's expensive, but there's only 15 available and it's a solid bronze case. And it's absolutely out of this world. And it's, it's a US Army Air Corps World War II Elgin 581 GCT movement. So, it's pretty rare. So, I mean, that is a collector's item, guys. So I would suggest just jumping onto their website just for like a little travel with down history lane because it's very, very cool. But love you guys. Okay, Stratton Watches. Love these guys too. One of the, um, when I first started my Aussie wristwatch Instagram page, I found Stratton pretty quickly. Same with Brew. Um, so Stratton was founded back in 2015. They were also crowdfunding um, assisted and um, very much undertones to sports, uh, sports cars, sorry, and that's because the owner of this brand is a sports car or a car enthusiast. If I had to pick one today, and I mean, again, it's really hard with this brand, but I thought I'd go for the Stratton Special Quartz at $499. And it's a stainless steel DLC clear coat for scratch protection, 42 millimeter case size. It's got a Swiss automatic Volju ETA 775 day date or Mecha Quartz. So I picked the Quartz. So it would have the Mecha Quartz VK67 day date. Um, it's very much a nod to a Tag Heuer Monaco, I reckon. Um, and another brand which we're about to get to, Autodroma or Autodromo. <laughs> um, this, this brand, this is another like racing or car enthusiasts like dream really. So 
It's the marrying of watches and cars, which seems to be a um, consistent theme, not only in this video, but just in general with watches, um, I find. And I mean, how many, how many watch shots have we seen with the steering wheel of a Porsche or Ferrari or anything? I mean, I'm guilty of doing that too, by the way. I'm not suggesting we stop doing that, but yes, it's very much, they go hand in hand. Um, so if I had to pick one, I decided to go with the Prototipo Chronograph at 1,300. Vic Elford is a legendary motorsport figure. Uh, and so it's based, it's a, it's a collaboration basically with him. So it's a, if you're a motor enthusiast, it's probably the watch for you, I've got to say. And it just, it does look very cool. And it, it nods back to the previous watch we talked about at Stratton or vice versa, whatever you want. Okay, Weiss or Weiss. Cameron Weiss or Weiss, I'm not sure. An entrepreneurial um, WASTEP, W-O-S-T-E-P trained watchmaker. So he's worked for uh, Automair Piguet, Vacher and Constantin, uh, launched his own company in 2013. Now, initially he did 10 pieces for his first watch and it was the original standard issue field watch. He hand finished and assembled it in a makeshift workshop in a walk-in closet at his home. <laughs> Originally based in LA, they are now in um, uh, Torrance, California. And each watch is individually assembled by a Swiss trained watchmaker with its case, crown and buckle, all machined in-house from a single block of stainless steel. He initially used Swiss movements in his watches, but as of 2016, he now uses an in-house developed caliber 1003, which is 95% American made. If I had to pick one, I love this watch. Um, and I love field watches too, it turns out. 42 millimeter standard issue field watch at 2000, 2000 US. Um, it's hand painted navel brass and durable canvas strap. Hand finished, assembled by hand. It's, it's, yeah, it's just great. It looks so cool. I'd love to get one of those. Next watch, slightly bigger brand people, Baltic. Past five years, um, or maybe even longer than that, there's been a resurgence in the collectability of vintage watches. So um, this brand has started to develop watches that kind of nod back to those. So the one that I would pick is the Aquascape or the Aquas, I don't know how to pronounce it. Then, and it's $900. Um, and it's, I think it's beautiful actually. Um, I think I've put this watch on uh, my dive watch collection. I, I can't remember, there's been there's so many, but it's 39 millimeters and it's got a sandwich dial and it, it's 200 meters water resistant and it very much nods to like an Omega, uh, yeah, like a Seamaster. It, yeah, that's why I picked it, I think. Carpenter is the next brand. New York, Carpenter Watches, boutique brand. They're based in Brooklyn, people. Um, they're all designed there and they are mechanical movements, vintage aesthetics, clean designs, and modern reliability is what they say. Founded by Neil Carpenter, a Savannah College art graduate, he had a fascination with watches and from it um, he had a family collection of American vintage pocket watches, classic minimalist looks, and that's what this brand strives for. If I had to pick one, M19 Brooklyn Field at $595, which is US. It's a Miyota 821A 21 joule automatic movement with hacking seconds, 40 millimeter case and it's very elegant uh, looking. And you could wear that as a dress watch for sure. Next, Dufresne, founded in Austin, Texas. Yes, I had to do a terrible accent there. Um, these guys have some really, really interesting watches. Um, now, they first made their way onto the scene with a competitively priced and capable dive watch called the Barton Springs. Now, I would pick, if I um, could only pick one, the GMT watch, the City Limits Silver Fume, or Fume, I can never get that right, $899, but I love the Fume um, dial, so that's why I picked that watch. Next is Elka, I love this watch, love! One of the, um, an older brand on the list, it's, <laughs> the heritage traces back to Amsterdam in 1877, um, but, the modern name Elka opened its doors only this year. Um, it's, it's a Swiss project by the former Swatch Group design veteran Hakim El Kadiri, nicknamed Elka. 
Um, and so it leans not only into vintage styles, but a defunct predecessor of eccentric, un unconventional aesthetic elements. If I had to pick one, I've picked the Elka V02-8002 at 2750 Australian dollars. I love it. It's got a beige dial and it just looks I love it. It just looks amazing. It's very, like, it's not my typical kind of watch, but I would happily wear that. Um, Ezra is next. In 2018, um, sorry, in 2016, the brand was rejuvenated by two Dutch gents and they produced their watches in Germany with Swiss movements. My pick would be the Sealander Bronze, Bronze Blue at $1,600 and it's got a crosshair dial. How many, you don't, you never see that anymore. That's why I picked it. Formex, one of the bigger players on the list. Um, I still think they're um, a micro brand, but they're probably getting up there. They have many of their watches are COSC certified um, and they're based in Biel, Switzerland. And they're just getting popular, more popular, like kind of year on year from what I can gather. They've also featured in my dive list and I've picked a dive watch, their famous reef, DW Le Automatic Chronometer, 330 meter at $2,900. Um, and yes, the yellow, sorry, I'm colorblind. The orange dial, Helios, um, is another watch brand to make the list. Some people, for some reason, call them the Rolex of micro brands. So I don't know enough about this brand or watches or the micro movement to kind of proffer an opinion on that either way. But uh, please, in the comments, if you've heard that term before and you kind of can shed some light on that, share it with me, please. So it's a Vancouver based brand and they got their start in 2009. I would pick, if I could only pick one, the Seaforth Series 4 at $775 US dollars. And I'd get the yellow dial because I thought that just looked unique and different. Love and Shoe, uh, Switzerland based micro brand that creates impressively constructed timepieces for adventurers. Yes, even for desk adventurers such as myself. <laughs> um, I think. They fit watches with Swiss made ETA movements. So they're slightly more expensive than some of the other watches on this list. If I had to pick just one, noting that this is completely sold out, couldn't get any of them anyway. The Transatlantique GMT Steel Cream. I just, I thought the steel and the cream with the two tone green looked really funky. Um, and I thought that would be an awesome watch to have in the collection if indeed it was available. Nokian is next, and it's uh, a joint developed project between Swiss watch entrepreneur Ben Kuffer and former Breitling owner Ted Schneider and retired NHL player Mark Street. It's the baby of a wide ranging list and it's founded in 2018. However, it's established itself quite well in the market. Movements are in partnership with a Swiss company uh, by making it, uh, sorry, the movements are made in partnership with a Swiss movement firm called Kinesi, and they're, subs they're a subsidiary, I can't say, they're a subsidiary of um, Tudor, a company by Tudor, sorry. They, and these watches boast 70 hour power reserves and cost chronometer certifications. Now, if I had to pick one, and I kind of went back and forth on this, but I, I would pick the wild one 42 millimeter However, it is $5,290 US, so it's like eight grand Australian-ish. Sport watch, in-house movement, whopping 70 hour power reserve. So, I mean, that's a lot of coin for a sport watch. That thought it looked pretty cool. <laughs> the Ocean Crawler is the next brand. They're based in Rochester, New York. They specialize in creating colorful vintage inspired dive watches with regulated Swiss made movements. Um, these are pretty unique, these watches, but, um, if I had to pick one, I went with the Palladino Wavemaker V2 Full Loom. It's $999, 43.2 millimeter case size. So it's kind of up, up in the right sweet spot for me. 60 hour power reserve, about 600 meters water resistant. So more than enough. Sarika, 
French brand founded in 2019. Um, it was a collaboration between watch blog Le Rebelle, and you know that I can't speak French, guys, so, and WM Brown Project, <laughs> um, uh, and established by satiric, satiric, satiral expert and a man and his watch author, Matt Hranrich. See the book back there. Um, and the first, re the, the first release, sorry, was a Dirty Dozen style field watch called the WWW William Brown Edition. Uh, if I had to pick one though, I thought I'd pick the Sirica 4512 California TXD Limited Edition at 850 Australian dollars. Um, it's got a California dial, so I don't have one of those in my collection, so I thought that would be quite fun. And uh, yeah, it's very different. And so I thought in terms of, you know, rounding out my collection, it would fit in quite well from that point of view. Veya. I really enjoy like the ethos of this brand. So these guys, founders Ryan Torres and Regan Cook, or Regan Cook, depending on what country you're from, pulled their collective life savings and they started this brand because they couldn't afford to buy the watches they liked. Um, so it's based in Venice and they released their first watch in 2017. Um, and they're designed and built with sporting, outdoor sporting activities in mind. So they're right up, you know, adventurous slash weekend adventurer tra um, trail there. If I had to pick one, I would pick the C5 Heritage Black 40 millimeter quartz at 239 uh, US dollars. Really um, simple uh, field watch. William Wood. Okay, these watches were wild. Founded in London in 2016, William Wood watches pay uh, tribute to its namesake founder Johnny Garrett's grandfather, uh, who was a decorated 25 year veteran of the British Fire Service. Love that. They use upcycled firefighting materials in their watches. Very cool. Their straps are made of hoses. <laughs> um, so the crowns are capped with a medallion crafted from melted down brass London Fire Brigade helmets from the 1920s. That is so cool. I mean, that's why you have to have one of these watches, right? Just for the history of that, the little, I mean, it's so clever. I love it. People just, you know, endless, endless um, creativity. Other aesthetic nods to firefighting culture are abound, including a checkered ring around the dial's perimeter in the place of a traditional minute tracker, echoing the livery of the British fire engine. Yes. A double index at 12 o'clock that resembles the collar markings on the lapel of the UK Fire and Rescue Service crew manager and an applied vintage fire helmet above the logo. I know, it's fabulous. I really love these. Okay, so if I had to pick one, and I found this really difficult because there were a lot on there, including a, um, a Jubilee cel celebratory um, edition, and because of the queen and everything, I was like, ooh, would I pick that? But no, I went with the Valiant Collection Bronze Sapphire. It's $1,632. Um, but something about a bronze watch, I think because like maybe they patina and pretty cool. Borzel, I've probably misspelled that, which is really embarrassing, but sorry guys, please. Um, I know we're gonna chat next month. Uh, sorry, uh, in a couple of months, well, you can school me on. On all that but it's a um, you'd think it's a Swiss micro brand but it's not they're Australian <laughs> um, yay so uh, they're, they're they're in Sydney Australia um, they're actually in the rocks not too far from me and if I had to pick one of these guys I think at the moment I'm picking the ocean moon for silver um, and it's it's, I don't know, it's, I love, I'm sorry. I just think there's an eye-catching um, minute hand in orange. Uh, you've got the clear sunray dial with super luminova. It's got intriguing sil silver dial features, white hands, numerals that glow in the dark. And it's basically designed for a professional diver. It's 42 millimeters. It's 200 meters water resistant. And I just think it looks cool. And all done. Scotland-based microband, micro, I did it again, microband, micro brand. Um, it's one of the most unique brands on this list. Um, they're, they're kind of on their way up out of the micro brand sphere, like Formex, definitely. 
um, but they do enamel dials people that are just absolutely stunning so I just I don't have a watch with an enamel dial there I find them pretty rare uh, so a brand that just does enamel dials is is pretty niche or niche depending on where you're from and that's why I loved these and I had to put them on the list so if I had to pick one I'm doing the model one Payne's gray it's with Glasgow made Fume enamel dial and it's ah uh, it's I'm looking at the picture now it's just it's so elegant and stunning I mean there's ones that just have solid color enamel dials and they look beautiful but the Fume just pops for me I love that look and aesthetic and sort of the duality of the color in there and and so that with kind of like the yellow and the brown so it's got um sorry <laughs> the yellow numerals and the the brown sort of hands it just everything about it works for me uh it's got a um a choice sorry of a Salida SW2010 Salida SW200 or the La Jouet Pere G100 movements Someone else is going to tell me which one I should pick because I've got no idea what the difference is there. And I'm happy to admit that. Um, 46, sorry, 38 millimeter case, 46 millimeter lug to lug. Um, uh, and it's sapphire with six layers of anti-reflective coating for the case. Absolutely stunning. Oof. I think that, oh, would have to go on the list now i couldn't find prices for those watches i suspect they're um, probably out of our price range um my price range um but yeah i think look that list was a lot of fun because there are so many options out there there's like a watch there's like a watch for everyone i keep saying that right like micro brands are fun um you know there's other ones in there that i haven't mentioned like i haven't I haven't said Dan Henry because I've talked about Dan Henry a lot, but he is a fantastic micro brand. In fact, why isn't he on my list? I must say that. Okay, so Dan Henry should be on the list. Um, and the, I know there's another one too, I'm gonna pop on there as well, but I, I don't know how to pick one for Dan, but maybe the 1962, but I could equally pick the 63, the 45, the 39, and you know, like the 37 even. I could easily pick the um, the Diver or the Maverick 72 or the 75. Um, I mean, so yeah, I'm cheating now, but that's the reality of where we sit with Dan. I probably want one of all of his watches, like, and I know he's got collectors that do that. Um, I would put Pantera on the list. Um, I've, as you know, done a couple of videos on their watches. I own two of their watches, one of which they gave to me very very graciously and the other one which I bought um, you know it's a micro Australian brand I don't think they're they're up at the independent yet um, but they're starting to move into the Swiss made space as well which means their price kind of goes up a little bit with that which is understandable but they're still they're still offering their um, more affordable watches the the, the um, uh, oh, I can't find my words you know the the non-swiss made movements there i found my words um so from that point of view you know they're definitely on the list if i had to pick one for them well um ooh, that's fun i mean i've got the two i really wanted but okay let's do that i reckon i'd get the flieger because um uh i don't have a pilot's watch in the collection so like i said micro brands are so much fun this video took me all a whole day to kind of write and research and it was such a joy um to see people's creativity kind of abound um and ingenuity and entrepreneurism to like start a brand out of their passion and to then have it succeed i mean that's fucking great um yeah so <laughs> let me know your thoughts if i've missed a brand that you're aware of that's in the micro cat category that you're a fan of let me know um let's have a chat about it 
as always like subscribe share talk about me um <laughs> and until next time thank you